Hello everyone, <coughs> today I'm going to talk about Adobe Camera Raw. My name is Ali Alsam, I'm a color imaging scientist, a photographer and an artist. So to talk about Adobe uh, Camera Raw, we need to see what we can do with Adobe Camera Raw. So let's start by looking at an image. Now here are a number of images which I have taken with my Nikon D2X camera. And when I was taking these images, I chose the setting in the camera which allowed me to take both JPEG and RAW files at the same time. So let me, for example, load this image, this JPEG image, into Photoshop. Now here is the JPEG image as I got it from the camera. Of course, for those who have been working with Photoshop, we can change a number of things in this image. However, as I'm going to try to show you, Camera Raw is going to give us much more freedom to manipulate this image using the RAW file than what we can do with the JPEG image. Okay, so let's load the RAW file of the same image. Now this is going to open in Adobe Camera Raw, which is a plugin. Okay, so here we are, we see a, a number of things. To start with, I would like to point out the, the histogram of the image. So here is the histogram of the image and and what we can see in the histogram is is at the very end of the histogram here we see the bright colors ending with white and at the very beginning of it we see with the dark colors in this region ending with black. So the first thing that we can see is that this line here indicates that there are some bright colors that have been clipped. By clipped, basically, we understand that we have lost the texture, for example, in some bright areas. But more importantly, we see that, that many dark colors have been clipped. And now this is what we can see in the histogram, but equally we can see it in the image. Now in this jacket, for example, in this area of the image, we see that this is almost totally black. So all this detail that is in the jacket has been lost. Equally in this region, here we see no details whatsoever. So many details have been clipped. This can be seen from the histogram and it can also be seen from the actual image. Now we will come back to look at how we can deal with this. But also there are a few settings that we can change. One of them is white balance. And white balance here is indicated as shot. So when we take an image, the camera registers what kind of what kind of white balance it had when taking the photo and writes that into the file. So this can be changed into auto, which means that Photoshop is going to try to balance the the color channels, the intensity of the color channels based on the content of the channel. Uh, now in this case, it gives us a blue tinge. We can choose daylight. This is reasonable, but it has a yellowish tint. We can choose cloudy. We can choose tungsten. We can basically change to any one of these. But most importantly, we can choose custom. And by choosing custom, basically this is going to allow us to change the white balance manually, if you like. So we can go to more reddish colors. This this number here is degrees Kelvin, temperature of the light, and we can go to bluish colors, and again we see the number in degrees Kelvin. So in this case, I think the, the image as shot, it had the right white balance, but many times when we take a photo, it, they would have the wrong white balance, so this allows us to change them. Now, tint is also going to allow us to change the, the feeling, the color feeling of the image. So it's similar to, to white balance and allows us some more freedom. So I'm going to go back and say as shot and that correct the tint of the color and the temperature. Now exposure is a very important slider and exposure basically as in the camera we can set the exposure to be plus one step, minus one step, in the RAW file, we have so much information that we can actually manipulate the image as if we had changed the exposure step on the camera. So we can go to higher exposure. And here you see that we got a completely different feeling in the image. 
and we can go to a much lower exposure and again it gives us another radically different feeling in the image. Now one of the best things about digital photography and that is clearly evident in draw files is that from one draw file we can basically get an infinite number of different photos with different feelings. So by by changing by changing the the exposure we get a completely different feeling for the image. So if if we go to a higher exposure suddenly this looks like a, a happier image and if we go to a lower exposure now we have a very different setting in the image. Which one is right is basically the choice of the photographer. So I'm going to just set this slightly lower to avoid overexposure in the lampshade and in the hat. And now I'm going to leave the recovery, but well, let's not leave the recovery. So recovery basically tries to recover the information lost in the highlight. I don't tend to lose, use that very much. But let's look at fill light, which is another very important function. Now, by changing this fill light, if we look at the histogram, by changing fill light, we are going to slide the area of the dark region of the image that has been flipped and lost. We are going to slide the compress it back into the visible part of the image. So what was lost in the image is now recovered. So if we push it all the way to here, now we don't really have much. So if we push it that way, now we have basically got all the information that was missing in this area that you remember was completely black. The jeans was completely black. Under the table we didn't see anything and all this information is now back. Now remember this is not something that we can do in the JPEG image because the JPEG image had already lost that information. So we don't need to push it all the way that far but again I need to emphasize it's the choice of the person who manipulates the image. It all depends on what kind of feeling you want in your image. Now let's look at blacks. Blacks is basically a slider that is going to decide where we are going to clip the image. So a JPEG image has a range that goes from 0 to 255 and now this number here says 5 and basically it says anything under 5 from 5 and below is going to be set to black to 0. Now if we were to slide the up now it says everything that is 34 and below is going to be black and now you can see that we have we have darkened the dark regions of the image and also we are getting some clipping in the image. So let me just slide it all the way up to 150 so that we actually, oops, that, that was the wrong slider. So if, if I slide the, the black one all the way up, now you see that we are getting quite a bit of, of black regions in the image. Again, notice that we are getting a new feeling in the image. So this is a personal choice. Now I'm going to set it back to about, about where it was, about 5. And let's look at brightness. Brightness is simply going to fill this image with light. So, so the more we, we slide it up, the lighter the image appears. So, and now notice that this is a completely different feeling again and that's something that gives us the freedom, which is the main reason we would be using raw files. Okay, so if we go all the way down, we get, we get a completely different image. And now if we just slide it up a little bit, we get this type of image. I would recommend that you always keep your eyes on the histogram as you are doing these operations. The histogram tells you in numbers what is happening with the image and that is something that is really good about about the Adobe RAW. Okay, contrast is basically going to increase the contrast in the image. So let me let me zoom into the image so that we can look at something. So we would expect that by increasing contrast 
we would increase the contrast between, for example, this brighter region and this darker region. By lowering contrast, we would, we would have a, a smaller difference between the brighter region and the darker region. So I'm going to put contrast somewhere here and go back and zoom out. Clarity is a slider that changes the, the also it changes the, the histogram of the image, but clarity also tries to, to de-associate or decolorate the, the histograms of the image so that there is less relation between, or less dependence between red, blue, and green. So now if we slide it all the way up, you see that we are getting more and more details if we slide it all the way down, we are losing quite a bit of detail. Of course, all these operations also happen to change the color of the image. So as you are looking at the image, as you are doing any of these operations, make sure that you keep zooming in and out of the image, look at details and look at the whole setting of the image and make sure that you like the feeling of it. Vibrance is going to give us more color in the image. It's a, it's a more vibrant, so it makes it into a warmer image. And if we slide down, then it almost made it into a black and white image, much less vibrant. So I'm going to set it somewhere here at plus five. Saturation is a slider that makes the colors more saturated. So by sliding it up, we would expect this color to be more greenish or yellowish, this to be more reddish and that to be bluish. So let's, let's try that and indeed that is what happens now. We have an unnatural image but it has its own setting and its own feeling. Okay, so let's, let's kind of put it here, open this image and then in the next session we will try to do other things with this camera raw. Okay, so let's open the image. Remember this is the original JPEG image and now we are getting an image that should look very different. Okay, so if we take this and put it as a layer on top of the other image, we don't need to save it. So did I say yes? No. Okay, so now if I was to slide up and down the image, this is our original image. This is an intermediate step. And this is what we got with camera roll. Thank you very much, and I'll talk about other things in the next session.